Good morning, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for Monday, August 25th, 2014. First stop on our tour today, sea surface temperature anomalies. Notice very warm here off the southeast coast compared to the long-term average. Quite a bit warmer than it should be in the subtropics, over into the Caribbean, and especially the Gulf of Mexico. Basically, this whole area prime for hurricane development if something were to get going and there are a few areas to watch this is interesting it looks like a little bit of a butterfly here in the pacific ocean there's his head and his wings uh, this is a cold water upwelling and just mixing of the water here because of uh, hurricanes karina and lowell uh, over here is where hurricane marie is currently and that's going to turn the water up pretty well so we should see that reflected when we look at this next week. The El Nino region starting to warm back up again as subsurface warming has commenced along this area. I think by October we should really be uh, seeing the effects of El Nino begin to show themselves. Um, it did not happen in the meat of the hurricane season here in August and the early September, so I think it'll be after September 15th before we really see the El Nino start to take shape and that will have some big impacts on the winter months ahead. Looking at the upper ocean heat content, very high here in the western part of the Atlantic Basin, especially in and around Cuba, parts of the Yucatan and into the Gulf of Mexico to the east of Florida, and even some fairly decent uh, upper ocean heat content values here right along the southeast coast, leaning up towards the Carolinas. Will something take advantage of that? Well, we'll have to wait and see. There's a few areas, as I mentioned, that we will have to look at. First, let's take a look at Cristobal here. Um, very, very easy to see the center of circulation. Not because it's well organized and it has a beautiful eye, like Hurricane Marie did yesterday and to some extent today. But this is more because strong upper level winds have come in and pushed the cloud cover, this convective activity, to the south and away from the low level circulation sitting right in here. And uh, this is extra energy trying to escape out and be pulled away. A little bit of shear, if you will, upper level winds heading in this direction and this direction, um, spreading out over here as well, divergence. It's just kind of a mishmash pattern in and around Cristobal for the time being, but this should improve conditions should improve for the storm as it heads off to the north and northeast with time away from the United States and even clearing Bermuda it looks like uh, and it should become a hurricane once these negative conditions abate. We also have favorable upward motion this is North America right here there's South America I'll outline it kind of in a rough fashion for you and these green areas indicate um, favorable divergence aloft basically and it's the sharpest or the most pronounced over on the western part uh, of the map here uh, and that includes Mexico and the Pacific area where Marie is but we're starting to see it get into the Atlantic Basin more and more and I do believe that this is going to propagate eastward over time and make the Atlantic Basin even more favorable in fact if we look at the Madden Julian oscillation index and the forecast starting today or yesterday through the 7th of September, GFS and its ensemble members indicating a favorable MJO or upward motion pattern for the next couple of weeks. The European model, similar, but it kind of moves the Madden Julian oscillation back over into phase two and three, uh, more into the Indian Ocean area uh, than the Atlantic Basin. Um, that would create more tropical waves, perhaps, with upward motion and then those lead uh, into the Atlantic at some point. So, I mean, we're not seeing it over here in the Western Pacific. Instead, it's over here on the Eastern side of the globe. And that's why we're seeing such a favorable, uh, relatively speaking, period right now in the tropics. A couple things to note, though. As I mentioned, let me go back over here uh, to this tab. And let's take a look at the Atlantic Basin as a whole, if this will load up for me. As I said, there's a couple of areas to watch. One of those, of course, is right here. 
uh, in the central Atlantic. But what I want to do is take a look at a satellite picture, just a still image, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. A couple of interesting items to watch over the next several days as my slow internet finally kicks in. So this is Invest Area 97L, loosely organized right now. It looks like it's going to try to develop slowly as it moves off to the west and west-northwest with time. So you folks here in the Lesser Antilles, you don't need me to tell you to keep an eye on it. Anything coming out of the deep tropics this time of year, you're going to want to watch. This is Cristobal here. Um, some of this energy here and this backdoor front that's come in and the upper level high that's going to build over the gulf tells me that we need to watch uh, and see what happens because this area is going to be prime for development uh, and it just needs a seedling or a kick, a match to light the fire. Now what I want to show you here, the upper level pattern, 200 millibars, 72 hours out, nice upper high sitting right over the western Gulf of Mexico. What does that mean? That means very light upper level winds favoring the upward motion for development. This is that area that I was showing you uh, on this particular map right here moving into this area. So this is a much more favorable pattern here uh, over the next several days. And another thing that caught my eye, this is the hurricane uh, weather research forecast model for Cristobal. Uh, and you've got your zoomed in, what they call uh, fine mesh grid uh, for your nice zoomed in shots. But then this is your parent domain, the larger extent of the model domain field. And you can see Cristobal sitting in here. This is 96 hours out. And then what is that? That's in the Gulf of Mexico. Let me zoom in on that even more, if it'll let me. There we go. So this is 96 hours out in time. And there in the northwest gulf, the H wharf seeing in the background, if you will, something developing here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is 97L, which today is sitting out here, and it makes its way into the Caribbean. Um, we'll watch and see what happens with that. But this is a lot closer to home, and it just brings to mind uh, Hurricane Umberto in 2007 that popped up with a very short notice. Just something to keep an eye on. I've seen some chatter about it on Twitter and elsewhere. People talking about it. When you get these fronts, these backdoor fronts that come down this time of year and lay across the region, that gives you an area of convergence for the air to come together and start to rise. And then when you've got that upper level high sitting over the area, you can develop something underneath, and it could be something to, uh, to monitor. You never know. In the Pacific, Hurricane Marie weakening. It was a Category 5 in this area yesterday, well away from the California and Mexican coastline, but the swells from it will radiate out over time and bring some very dangerous surf. Great surfing, but dangerous waves nonetheless, and that needs to be considered if you're going to head out into that region. Be careful out there. And the same is to be said for the swells that will be impacting parts of the East Coast I believe it'll be more up into New England later in the week than the Mid-Atlantic or the Southeast right now. So something to keep an eye on if you're headed to the beach. Just be careful. That is it. A look at the tropics. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Hopefully you learned something from these updates on Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll be back next week with more for you then.